Good morning, church. Romans 4.21 says that Abraham was fully persuaded that God had power to do what he had promised. In other words, Abraham had convictions that God will keep his promises. In Genesis 39 verse 9, Joseph says that how then can I do this great wickedness and sin against God? This is when he stood against an Egyptian temptress. In Hebrews 11 verse 25, it says, Moses chose rather to be mistreated with the people of God than enjoy the fleeting pleasures of sin. Daniel verse, uh, chapter 1 verse 8 says, Daniel resolved that he would not defile himself with the king's food or with the wine that he drank. So Daniel refused to compromise his convictions in the face of an, a, a wicked, uh, hostile Babylonian culture. And Paul explains, expressed similar convictions in 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 12, part B. I know whom I have believed and am convinced that he is able to guard what I have entrusted to him for that day. So we see here different lives, different men who are uh, walking with God and they are people like us. But there is something common in them and that is they have very strong convictions. So they have developed these convictions, these godly convictions, and they are going to stand by it no matter what the circumstances are and God will guide them and give them strength. But this is very important in Christian uh, Christian life where the godly convictions are important. And where does this godly convictions come from? And we read that in 1 Thessalonians chapter 1 verse 5 where Paul says, the gospel came to you not simply with words, but also with power, with the Holy Spirit, and with deep conviction. So when we are saved with the gospel and we believe in Christ and, and uh, we believe that he is our savior and he died for our sins, we not only get uh, saved, but we have this power now with the Holy Spirit and then we have deep conviction. So the conviction starts from there. But over a period of time, we have the choice to keep it aside. And that is where a lot of Christians make mistakes, that they don't develop godly convictions. And convictions can be many. Uh, Bible has a lot of promises. And there are people uh, who can have personal convictions. So there will be individuals who will be focusing on certain convictions and they'll be driven by it in, uh, to the point where it will become a purpose in their life and that is between God and them and that is fine. But what is also important is there is one common conviction every Christian need to have and that is living by the power of God. So every Christian must have this conviction that on a daily basis we have the power of God because of gospel. We read that and now we are going to live by it and we are going to make it very practical in our lives on a daily basis. We are going to live by the power of God, which also means that now if there is any weakness because we are not perfect would not matter because the grace of God will be sufficient. When we live by the power of God, then our weakness is not our problem. It is God's problem. His grace will work on our weakness and, and God will make it either irrelevant or make it keep it aside and, and make things happen because he gets the glory. The greatness of God is revealed in our weakness. Therefore, Paul says in 2 Corinthians 12, 9, where God tells Paul, my grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, I will boast all the more gladly about my weakness so that Christ's power 
may rest on me. So we now do not worry when the world will tell us, why don't you work on your weakness? I'll offer a course to you. You do some certification. You, you work on the weakness. Uh, only then you can go ahead in life. But we will rely on God's word. We have the conviction that no matter what, God's power is enough for us because God's grace will work in, in our strengths and in our weakness. In fact, in Philippians 4.13, we read, I can do everything through him who gives me strength. So the power is going to come from God. But one of the most important thing to develop this conviction is uh, is found in James chapter 1 from verses 23 to 25. And James chapter 1, 20, was, uh, we, we read that quickly, where James is comparing that anyone who hears the word but would not do it, if he is not a doer, then he is like a person who looks in the mirror, he looks at his face and then he moves away and he forgets the way he looks. So by not doing or by not obeying the word, we will never be able to develop convictions in our life. So it is the single-mindedness, it is the it is the godly convictions that would lead us to godly action, which is nothing but obedience. And that obedience will now set us free because once we are in God's will, we are doing God's will, then we are set free. We don't have to worry about the consequences. We don't have to worry about anything else. We have done what God wanted us to do. And now it is just that we are going to uh, rest uh, in his joy, in his peace, and, and we'll disregard everything that would happen. That is the reason why James is saying in verse 25, uh, but one who looks intently at the perfect law or the finished word, the law of liberty and abides by it, not becoming a forgetful hearer, but an effectual doer, this man will be blessed in what he does. So when we are the doers of the word, when we obey God's word, that is on a daily basis, we experience freedom like nothing which we have experienced before this is this is the key to develop convictions and live in the way god would like us to live amen